Hey Lighthouse, well we made it to Friday and I thought we would do our first question and conversation. Let's not call it question and answer. It's not like I have the answers. God has the answers. The scriptures are the answers. More of this is an opportunity for us to ask a good question. The Bible is full of not just difficult things. You know, they're difficult if you're trying to pin the Bible or every verse in the Bible into little cubby holes that you have. But but if you can just understand that the Bible is above us and that, that as we kind of figure out its grandeur and its greatness, um, that we're allowed to have some mystery. We're allowed to have some, uh, I don't even want to say confusion, but we're allowed to grow in our understanding of the scriptures. And, and how we do that is in community and conversation. So let's call it questions and conversation time. And the question, um, I actually, there's I was joking about my uncle Steve asking a question. He had a great, it, it, his question was, was, I know God is spirit, but is he a tall spirit or a short spirit? That's a hilarious question. And, but it really got me thinking um, about like, just what do we mean that that God is spirit and and that matter came out of spirit? So maybe we'll talk about that at another time. But I wanted to address this. Got this question. It is excellent. It says, "What does Jesus mean when he says in John fourteen twelve, truly, truly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father." So the question is, how can things we do be greater than what Jesus did? What is greater mean? What can we do uh, that would be in this category of greater works than these? Is this something we should strive to do? Uh, and how can we best do those things? That is a great question, my friend John. Well, um, first of all, um, God, would you would you uh, lead us in wisdom as we talk about this? God, you're, you're the, the giver of answers as we talk about truth. We're not talking about just uh, words in English, but we're talking about pursuing Christ himself, who is the truth. And so God, would you would you lead us as we uh, think about this? Well, it's a good idea. Can we start with, before we get to exactly what those greater works are, um, are can we talk about the big idea? And the big idea, I think, of this passage is that the relationship that the disciples are going to have with Jesus is going to be a lot like the 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 relationship that the disciples have seen Jesus and the Father have the relationship of uh, the the mission of the disciples the work of the disciples it would be like Jesus is trying to give them some understanding of like what's going to be like life like after Jesus leaves and He's giving them this picture. You've seen God work in me. I'm going to work in you like that. There's this connection to the Father. We've seen kind of Jesus uh, perform all kinds of works, but it's always been empowered by the Father. And he's saying, the way the Father has empowered me, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to empower you like that. Um, and and all of these works have, have been really to bear witness to the glory of God of the father to bear witness to the, to the work, the mission of the son. And so as he looks at these disciples, I think the big idea is, Hey, when I leave, you're not going to be left alone. Um, you are going to have mission. You're going to have things to do. And as you do, I will be with you. Um, you know what it can't mean for sure. What this can't mean is I'm downloading um, selfish power to you, that you are going to be able to do works when you feel like it, as you deem necessary, because I've had magical powers and now you've had magical, and now you have magical powers. Jesus didn't have magical powers. We don't have magical powers. We never work. Remember, uh, Paul, a couple of different places reminds us with spiritual gifts, it is God that works them in us. And the purpose is to build up the body. So um, that is an outworking of this verse right here. Jesus is saying, look, like I've been connected to the Father and he has propelled me into good works. So you are connected to me and I will propel you um, into good works. So if we're going to understand anything in the scriptures, as you know, you've heard me say lots of times before that the three most important things are context, context, and context. And, and so first, let's put this in the context of the upper room. Like this is where this sentence happens. And, and you know, we can argue about... Um, you know, how does this relate to us working miracles? Or how does this relate to the disciples working miracles? Or, 
you know, what do I have the authority to do? What did they have the authority to do? And I think, man, just you're missing the intimacy of this passage, right? You're missing like the, the, the real Jesus and his best friends in this room as Jesus about, is about to go to the cross. You know, they've just had the Last Supper. And as Judas has taken the morsel of bread, he's left. Can you imagine the tension in the room? And after Judas leaves, Peter says, oh, Jesus, I'll never, I'll never be the one who denies you, you know? And, and, and Jesus says, oh, you're going to deny me three times before sunrise. Um, and then after this, Jesus looks around and says, hey, don't let your hearts be troubled, but believe in me, believe in God. Um, there's this conversation where, where Thomas says, man, we don't know where you're going. Jesus says, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. And Thomas goes, we don't know where you're going. Do you see the, the, the worry, the anxiety in the room? And, and so Jesus says, Tom, I'm the way. You don't know where I'm going. I'm the way. And then Philip says, you know what, Jesus, if you just show us the Father, if you would just show us God, that would be enough for us. We, we, could, we could go through whatever else the world has for us. And, and Jesus kind of tells Philip, Gee, Philip, haven't, haven't you seen me? And as you've seen me, you've seen the Father. There's this deep connection between Jesus and God. And Jesus is trying to communicate this intimate relationship I have with the Father. Like, like this is this is a picture of the relationship that we that we have that we're going to continue to have. Like they're worried. What happens? Jesus keeps talking about going and dying. What's gonna happen? Jesus says, Look, I am going to be with you. This isn't instruction about how to work miracles. This is assurance that they won't be alone. You've seen the Father work through me. I'm going to work through you like that. Like the Father um, has been with me, I'll be with you. You'll work. You'll go do stuff. You'll be on mission. You'll do things in my name. That's the, the next verse too, right? Is anything you ask in my name, I'll, I'll give it to you. And again, this is not like instruction on how to get whatever we want. Rather, this is Jesus saying, guys, like you've seen me go and work and you've seen me represent God. And as I, in the things that I've needed, God has provided in that same way, you're going to go and represent me. You're going to work in my name and what you need, what you ask for, I'll be sure you have. Um, so let's talk also about the context in the in the book of John. Um, John talks a lot about signs. If you you know uh, have have read anything about John, you go his favorite word for miracle is signs. These are signs. In fact, he sets his whole gospel up, kind of talking about these several signs that point to Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus as the the um, fulfillment of messianic expectation. And, um, and and so starting with water uh, to wine and ending with the resurrection, there are a series of signs that point to Jesus as the Messiah, the one that we should follow who glorifies the Father. So that's the word that John uses for miracle. This word that when Jesus says uh, greater works, this is a different word. This word is ergon. And that in John, it's only used one time in Matthew. I don't think it's in Luke or Mark at all. But John uses this word work a lot. And when he uses it, it refers to like their mission. It's like the, the, the work that you have to do. So we'd have a hard time making this passage mean, hey, you've seen me do great miracles and you're going to gr do great miracles too. Rather, it's more like you've seen my job description. You've seen my mission. And oh man, you're going to have even a greater one. And we still, that still doesn't answer the question. That still leaves us thinking, how is, how are the disciples jobs greater than Jesus? How is the disciples' job description, their mission, greater than Jesus? And, and you know, I, again, I don't know if this is really Jesus telling them, you guys are going to be great. I, I think this is Jesus. You almost think of this like a graduation or, oh, the places you'll go. You know, you, the scale, you're going to go places, you're going to do things, you're going to work in ways that you cannot possibly imagine. And in many ways, their work was greater, at least farther reaching than Jesus. Jesus was in Galilee and, and Jerusalem, 
where the disciples probably went North Africa to India to to the British Isles maybe um, it was it, it was geographically greater than Jesus but I think there's something else there too they were going to be the first ministers of a greater era a greater age as Jesus does his work obviously it is before the cross and the resurrection so as Jesus is is doing his work he is the the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament prophets, beginning with, um, I guess, beginning with, with Moses, beginning with Abraham, and then ending with John the Baptist, who was the last of the Old Testament prophets. But Jesus is still, like, in that transition period, in that um, Old Testament age where it is before the resurrection. The church has not been born. The Holy Spirit has not come at Pentecost. The cross hasn't happened, which is the propitiation for sin. The resurrection hasn't happened, which is which is the, the, the declaration, the victory over death. And those things haven't happened. And so as the disciples go on their mission, on their work, in their ergon, they are going to, to have a message that is not just, as Jesus says, follow me, I'm the Messiah, the kingdom of God is near to you. They have an even more amazing um, witness than that. They say, no, we are bearing witness to the resurrected Savior. Jesus is saying, trust me, I'm going to die, and three days later I'm going to rise again. They have maybe even a greater message where they point backwards and say, Jesus did die. He did raise. And this is the great message of all time. So I don't think those are locked in answers. There's still some, there's still some chance to think through, well, what exactly did Jesus mean by that? But certainly um, we can't say that he meant you guys are going to do more spectacular miracles. The word, the language just doesn't allow for that. The context doesn't allow for that. Although these men did some pretty spectacular, the people Jesus is talking to in that first generation clearly um, did have amazing miracles as part of their ministry, but, but that's not what's going on here. This is Jesus saying, you've seen how God sent me on mission. The Father sent me on mission, and he provided for me. When I've asked him for help, he's been there. And you guys are going to go even more places you're going to bear witness to, to even a greater story, the story of the resurrection. And as you go, just like you've seen the Father take care of me, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to go in my name, and I'm going to provide for you. You're going to work, and you're going to find that I'm there using you. It's going to be you doing stuff, but you're going to see that I'm the one empowering you. So, guys, I think the beauty of this passage is we have a great message. We serve a risen king. So let's go take that great message and do a great work of bearing witness to that to the ends of the earth. All right, Lighthouse, I'll see you.